Shabbat Shalom Family uh, It is the Sabbath I'm in Nebraska It's uh, 1040 in the a.m. Um, here we go Getting ready to drop a video on this dream that I had last night so, this would have been about 2 in the morning when I woke up from this dream. And I'll tell you what the dream was. It was like, uh, it was during the day and I was under a, uh, like a canopy. Alright, and the canopy had uh, all type of, uh, we'll say, machinery in it, okay? And I had a huge sword in my hand. And uh, at the, I was at this particular piece of equipment. And um, uh, it, was a, uh, it was a belt grinder, like a belt sander. And uh, sharpening my sword. Sparks flying everywhere. I step away from this belt grinder, the, the, this sander. Um, and uh, there's a whole bunch of people behind me. They've got swords in their hands. And uh, they step up to it. And it's sparks flying everywhere. It's sharpening their swords. I walk away. Looking at the crowd, it's a huge line behind me. You know, and it's. In and out, in and out. So I'm looking. I'm walk as I'm walking away, and um, a lady stops me. She's coming from somewhere else, not from that line. And she says, "Hey, what you doing?" And I said, "Oh, just getting my sword sharpened." And she looks at me with this weird face and says, "What sword?" And I look at her, and then I look down at my hands. And I don't have a sword in my hands. And I woke up from the dream instantly. And instantly, I was given clarity in what it meant. I think it was threefold. It was like a threefold dream. And I'll tell you why. The sword that I had in my hand was... Uh, a double-edged sword. And I don't I don't like those. I I have I have a lot of blades and swords and stuff, man. I, as of late I've been looking into them uh um because I was trying to help somebody find find, you know, recommend a, a blade to them. And so uh, a lot of this stuff that I knew about them started coming, you know, about, you know, different blade materials and uh, uh grades of steel. And things of that nature started, you know, flooding back and st stuff that I had learned over the years. And so, uh, but I don't like double-edged swords, you know. Um, but this particular one that I had in my hand was the was a double-edged sword with a nice hand guard on it to make sure, you know, uh, my hand didn't slide up the grip onto the blade if I was thrusting it. So... Again, instant clarity when I woke up from this dream. The double-edged sword. Well, we know what the word says about uh, two-edged sword, which is a double-edged sword. That's what it's called, you know, today, or two-edged sword. Double-edged or two-edged sword. And the word... That is uh, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. Wow. I'm up this morning reading this. Um, reading this. And so 
one more verse and I'm going to tell you what it what it is. Threefold threefold interpretation of this dream that I got. So Ephesians chapter 6 verse 17 it says, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now, I touched on this spirit. We see spirit capitalized. All right. I was just going. Over, I had talked about this and uh, the law is not dead, but alive in us. And we see spirit capitalized. That's denoting a. Uh, a person, place, or thing. We know the spirit that it's talking about is the Holy Spirit, which is the spirit of Jesus. He had to ascend, like he said, for the spirit to come down, um, the comforter uh, in Acts, and uh, which later, you know, developed into the Pentecost with the Holy Ghost fire up in the upper room, right? And so I'll tell you this. Um, instantly interpreted for me three ways but they all connect um, the first interpretation that I got was the grinding wheel is God Every I was in the line amidst everybody else getting sharpened in the word of God I walked away with the double edged sword which is the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, all right? Which it says is the Word of God. And it's a double-edged sword. The sparks reminiscent of the Holy Ghost fire, but being sharpened in the Word of God, meaning studying. Studying, that's one. My other one... Is upstairs on my nightstand. Um, studying and being sharp with the word. Knowing it. Spirit resides in here. Understand that. The second interpretation that I got, which was a little troubling, but it was a reminder. I won't say it was troubling, but it was a rem reminder, as the word said, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Let me look it up. Like I said, I'm trying to get out of the habit of paraphrasing scripture. Um, so that will be 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Absolutely. Um, so it was a reminder when, when I, I walked away with, and I remember carrying it. This is, this is a very uh, important part to me. I remember walking away from the wheel, the sharpening wheel with it. It was a long sword. And like I said, it was a, a double-edged sword, and I had it in one hand. I had it outstretched. I can't really, but I had two hands. I had the end of the blade sitting on my, on the flat of my hand with the flat of the blade in one hand, and then uh, in the other hand that I'm holding the phone with, it had the uh, the handle in it. So I'm walking away with it, and I'm carrying it ever so I'm careful. I'm careful with it. I don't have a sheath for it, which is the number one rule of a. If if it's if if you got a sword in your hand and you're not using it, it needs to be sheathed. Well, this is a representation of hey. Well, this is a that's a rule for a carnal weapon. All right, but the weapon of our warfare, the sword, is not carnal. It's supposed to be unsheathed at any given time, ready to do what. Ready to do what?
that would be uh, one second. Looks like Jude chapter one, verse three. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was delivered unto the saints. Ready at all times to contend for the faith, to wield the sword of the spirit. All right. Which is the word of God. When it talks about our savior. Coming off the clouds. That would be Revelation chapter 19 point, uh, excuse me, verse 15 <laughs> point. I'm, I got numbers going around in my head from the work that I do. Um, and, and I want the KJV. Hopefully this is it. It says uh, Revelation chapter 19, verse 15. And from his mouth proceeds a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations and he will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God, the Almighty. Remember what it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Jesus is known as the word who came down. The word was made flesh. And his spirit resides in you, meaning it's the word. Sharper than any two edged sword, right? So, so. Getting back to this part about the sword in my hand, the unsheathed sword, no scabbard, no nothing for it, but I'm, I'm carrying it. The woman walks up to me. She says, where's the sword? I mean, she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, hey, I'm sharpening my sword. She's like, what sword? I look down. There's no sword in my hand. That means it's of the spirit. But the Holy Spirit was showing me, stay sharp with it and always have it ready. Hence the physical, uh, the, the, the physical depiction he gave me of it. And it's a double-edged sword. It's unlike any any sword that I have in my physical my physical armory, my physical inventory. It's now this is a double-edged sword that's supposed to be unsheathed and ready to contend for the faith at any given moment and to be sharp in it. And how do you how are you sharp? Well, with the sparks flying, you sharpen yourself in the word. You go see God. In the in the Bible. Or we worship him in spirit and in truth. That means walking in the spirit where the sword resides. The last and final interpretation that I got from this dream was that the woman who walked up to me, she was without it. She, she, she was without it. She wasn't in the line getting sharpened. And I was like, well, maybe, you know, she already she she was out of the line before me, but she still it was like she was kind of befuddled. She had this befuddled look. That means she the Holy Spirit says she wasn't walking in the spirit. So she couldn't see what it was that you were doing. Hence, all these verses about why they won't understand why they can't see. And uh, <laughs> Romans chapter eight, verse seven. And I just told a brother of mine about this last night. If you guys watched uh, the video, uh, the law is not dead, but alive in us. I was led in the spirit to go back and watch that video. And uh, check what it says. Again, precept upon precept. Of why people can't understand or see. It says Romans 8, 7. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Nor can it do so. Key words. A mind governed by the flesh. This woman in my dream wasn't walking in the spirit. She could only see what I was doing in the flesh. Just walking away with my hands outstretched. Because when I looked down my hands were still outstretched. Like I had a physical sword in my hand. But the Holy Spirit was making the distinction for me. And that's why he showed me the sword walking away with it after I was being sharpened with it. 
um, or sharpening it. He, uh, the Holy Spirit reminded me of this. Um, if we're not sharp in the word, the Antichrist will be sharp in the word for us in his own way. The woman who did not have the sword of the spirit was susceptible and capable and, 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 and able to be led astray because she wasn't walking in the spirit. Remember, it was a whole line of people coming right up to the same sander. The same sharpener, the same wheel, sparks flying everywhere, you know, and uh, she herself couldn't see what was going on because the mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. There are there's so many other scriptures that I found that I'm going to expound on that I was talking about earlier this week about why the carnal mind can't understand that the, the verse lays it out. I found I found six, this is the sixth scripture, and I went, I glossed over this in the reading, and the law is not dead, but alive in us. And when I read it again last night, I said, there it is again. It keeps telling you, precept upon precept. So, uh, I'm going to tell you this. There's going to come a time, and I've, I've spoken on this a few times. I don't know if I've said it here, but I need to say it here, because I was reminded of it as a result of the re that last interpretation he gave me was that these aren't going to be around much longer typing it up on my computer won't be around much longer these apps won't be around much longer the, the enemy is not going to allow that the antichrist is not going to go for it all right signs and wonders y'all signs and wonders um we worship him in spirit we worship the most high in spirit and in truth. In retrospective hindsight, what I always like to deal in is that if we're not worshiping the most high in spirit and in truth, by default, you are worshiping the enemy and your flesh and lies. Spirit and truth for the most high and flesh and in lies with the enemy. And he is not going to when it. What, what, what is it? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. Now, when it says all these things, I mean, you can go into Matthew 6 and see what these things are. But that scripture lends itself to uh, the one I was really looking for. But thank you for bringing that to my attention, Holy Spirit. Um, and I'm typing with one hand. Old Testament. Isaiah. Chapter 55, verse 6. Verse, oh my goodness, chapter 55, verses 6 and 7, because I see something already. Thank you, Lord. It says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Wow. Wow. Seek ye first the kingdom. Seek him while he may be found. Ladies and gentlemen, saints, this is telling us that there is going to come a time that uh, when it says, uh, when it talks about removing the daily sacrifice in Daniel, uh, and I believe Jeremiah talks about it as well. I went over these scriptures this week. Um, there's going to be a time to where the enemy, the Antichrist, is going to do away with the truth that we can seek, that we better already have in us. 
We better already have it in us. And we better be versed, well versed and weathered in the warfare up to that point. Like I said, this is practice for the big game. All right. So we should be wielding this <clears throat> this sword. Should be, should have been cutting. Should have been cutting. Up and uh, up to, up until that point. When it says double edged, that's for you yourself and somebody else. That's cutting yourself with it. You get cut. You get cut with it. But uh, I have this saying to where. These cuts are to heal and not to kill. Anything that doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So to get cut with the word, a double-edged sword. It's twofold. It's two-edged for a reason. It cuts you too, if it needs to. And so, uh, that was the dream. And the three interpretations that I got from it. And a bit of a warning on the end. That we need this in us. All right. We need this in us. Excuse me. It needs to be in us because it's the spirit. It's the spirit. It's the spirit of God, the spirit of truth. We're supposed to be lovers of truth. If we're not dealing in truth, by default, we're dealing in the lies. That's what it is. There is no middle ground. The middle ground belongs to the enemy. It's deception. It's gray area for a reason. It's dark, light. In gray area. And the gray area is the dark. <laughs> it's only light with the most high. And the sun. Alright. Um, so uh, that's it. Enjoy the rest of your Sabbath. Shalom. And uh, may Yah bless you. Keep you. Man let them sparks. Let those Holy Spirit sparks fly. That Holy Spirit. That Holy Ghost fire. Fly. Let those sparks fly. Get sharpened in the word. For yourself. Study to show thyself approved. Unto who? Unto who? Not for your neighbor. Not for your wife. Not for your friend that you're trying to impress down the street. Let's finish the verse. Study to show. Second Tim uh, excuse me, Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Chop, 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 chop. Rightly dividing it. Chop, 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 chop. What are we chopping it up with? Hmm? Man. Y'all bless you. Keep you. Enjoy the rest of your Sabbath. Love you all. Shalom.